John G. Lake lived his life and ministry with a simple yet profound revelation, God in man. He was convinced that the key to divine healing was not found in your doing, but in your being, simply to being in Christ. My friends, read through scripture and you will reach no other conclusion, but the life of the spirit-filled believer is one in which we see and do the things that Jesus did. This was the story of Lake, a life of faith evidenced by a multitude of signs, wonders, and miracles. Lake's healing ministry began April the 28th, 1898. For the last three years, his wife, Jenny, was suffering from tuberculosis. The doctors had failed to heal her and had offered no hope. Jenny literally was at death's door. Friends and ministers, they instructed Lake to resolve himself to God's will, to accept Jenny's death. But for Lake, those words were unacceptable. In a moment of desperation, Lake threw his Bible across the room. It fell to the floor and opened up to Acts 10. As Lake walked over, he picked it up. His eyes were drawn to verse 38, which said, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And he went about doing and healing all those who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Those words gripped Lake. He was convinced that it was Satan who was responsible for his wife's illness. It was the devil who was stealing this mother from her children. It was the devil taking her away. He also realized that not only was Satan the author of death, but Jesus was the author of life. Faith filled the man. He marched into the bedroom where his wife lay and he declared that she would be healed at 9.30 a.m. He then knelt beside her and called on the living God. The power of God came on his wife. The paralysis left, her heartbeat became normal, her breathing became clear and the fever broke. Lake heard her faintly cry out, praise God, I'm healed. Well, that story of Jeannie's healing, it spread quickly across the nation. Many came to the home. They were thrust into a highly sought after healing ministry. People were coming daily to be prayed for. This event began a life of ministry that would take Lake across the United States and Africa, preaching the gospel, praying for the sick, and seeing the power of God move upon millions of people. In 1914, Lake came here to Spokane, Washington and established a healing room right behind me. He began to train ministers to pray for the sick. It's estimated that over 100,000 people were healed here within a few short years that that healing room operated. The effect on the community was dramatic. Even newspapers regularly published stories of the many testimonies coming from the healing room. The stories themselves were so unbelievable that the Better Business Bureau was called to verify the validity of the reports. Lake wasn't concerned. You see, he had never backed down from putting the miracles to the test. At one time, he had even allowed himself to be the subject of experimentation. He visited an institution, submitted himself to a series of tests. They attached instruments to his head, to his brain, to read the vibrations of his mind. He read through scripture. He spoke in his prayer language. The professor said, we've never seen anything like this. Lake replied, gentlemen, it's the Holy Ghost. When they were finished with their test, Lake asked them to do one more thing. He said, go to your hospital and bring back a man who has inflammation in the bone. Take your instruments, attach it to his leg, leave enough space for me to get my hands on him. When the instruments were ready, Lake put his hands on the man's shin and prayed that God would kill the devilish disease by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let your spirit move in him, let him live. He then asked, gentlemen, what's taking place? And they replied, every cell in his body is responding. Lake said, it's so simple. The life of God comes back into any part that's afflicted. So when the Better Business Bureau sent word that they were coming to investigate the claims of the healing room, Lake welcomed it. He called together all those whose testimonies had been appearing in the papers. Each one gave their account before the Business Bureau. Lake even provided the investigators the names of hundreds of others who had been healed. He asked the Bureau, create a panel with physicians, lawyers, judges, educators to render a verdict. When the inquiry had finished, they sent a letter praising Lake for the work that he was doing in their city. Two members even came to him privately to say, you didn't tell half of it. More than 200 individuals a day were coming to the healing room right here. Cancer, tuberculosis, arthritis, all manner of diseases were being healed on a daily basis. In fact, the success of the healing room led to Spokane, Washington, being declared as one of the healthiest cities in the world by the government from 1915 to 1920. Even the mayor held a public commemoration to honor Lake and his efforts. During this time, the Southern Association of Evangelists, they met in Hot Springs, Arkansas. The question of divine healing was a topic of discussion. They decided to write Lake asking the following questions. They wanted to know, is God able to heal? Does he ever heal? Does God always heal? Does God use means in healing? Lake's reply was simple. He said this, the first question, is God able to heal? Coming as an inquiry from the Church of Christ, 
her varied branches as represented by your association, which includes ministers, evangelists of almost every known sect, is a confession of how far the modern church has drifted in her faith from that of the primitive church of the first four centuries. My friend, do you doubt God's power to heal? Do you believe healing can be yours or that God can use you for healing? I wanna leave you with the words of Lake himself. He said this, he said, every person in every age, in every land who has faith in the living eternal covenant keeping God is empowered to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. My friend, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus has always been the healer. He's still the healer. And you can put your trust in Jesus alone to touch and heal you.